Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Weekly Game Chat. I'm your host, Chris, as always, joined by my co-host, Sean. Hello, people of the world, and uh, how are you doing? What? Is this like post-football season, Sean? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You're the one always trying to entice people with things. What do you mean? You just gotta, <laughs> you'll eventually get to a point where you, you know, you know, it just is what it is. I'll put my flower shirt on. Yeah, I'm rocking a flower shirt today. It's glorious. Masculine. Yeah. It Confident, is. buddy. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> well, it, I did. It's not spring, though. That's the part I'm it, confused. It has nothing. <laughs> flowers. Oh, my God. You're so dumb. Um, and John. I just got my rejection letter. Oh, just got it? White House Chief of Staff. They're just moving uh, on to another candidate. <laughs> hey, they're they're searching. You tried. I tried. And I applaud you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Believe me. <laughs> you can see that. Me. I would love to see that press conference. Huge. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> it's like the moment he you would say, I accept it, it would just go click and send. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Um so everyone have a good week. I'm I'm like super food lagged right now because uh we have it is the week of what I like to call at work a thousand lunches because you know the way corporate five hundred companies want to show their love to you is during the holiday season, it seems like every day some part of your organization is having a party or get together or whatever. Great, Chris. Now it so, used to be vague, but now people know that we're a top five hundred company. Yeah. So now you've holding, narrowed it down even further. In. Great job. They yeah. could throw they could throw darts. <laughs> they can One person's already figured it out though. It's, yeah, but <laughs> well, that's after some back and forth. I, Nintendo, uh, is that a Fortune five hundred company? I don't know. I, or do you have to be Fortune five hundred in the United States? I would think, yeah. I think because I'm sure they're list on, listed on the Japanese stock market first and foremost. Know. You don't. I know. do not know for certain. <laughs> <laughs> You're just saying things you don't know. Um, I discovered uh, at one of our, my team's little Christmas luncheon, we did a combo thing. We had, we do a, uh, was it a birthday quarterly kind of meeting? So we don't yeah. do every birthday. And then we were like, but it's close to Christmas. So let's just combo it. Oh, I feel bad for them. <laughs> we went to the world famous, not really, but you know. <laughs> Longhorn Steakhouse. Heck yeah. The? The Longhorn. They say it's better than Ruth Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually didn't get a steak. I went for the uh, lunch portion of the Parmesan crusted grilled chicken, which also has a Parmesan sauce was on it, it. Was it good to your mouth? It hole? was delicious. Nice. It was better than any steak I've had in there. Mm-hmm. I and mean, they got some good steaks. It but yeah, it, I was say, oh, part yeah. of that could have been because we waited till about 2 p.m. to go. <laughs> I'll do it. And your boy was hungry. Um, and we played Dirty Santa, which is always fun, too, at these Christmas things. I don't oh, know if you guys did anything like that. Dirty Santa makes me ill. I don't think we could do it with ours because there's just too many people. Like, whether well, you're talking our media area or if you went to the division, especially. <laughs> the division would be fun. The way we played it, we had one big dice. Not quite as big oh, okay. as a fuzzy dice, but kind of foamy-ish. And a printout. And it said, if you roll a one through six, this is what you do. It included keep your gift, swap your gift, hmm. um, give your gift back to the person who stole it, go to the left or go to the right kind of things, right? Yeah. So uh, we ended up going around our table twice, and I ended up with – I had in my hand what eventually was an Echo Dot, an Amazon Echo Dot. Nice. But I ended up with a $20 Walmart card. Which I immediately went and spent on Super Smash Brothers. How much, <laughs> that's great. How much? How much is an Echo Dot? I think I think it's they're like, around twenty nine or thirty nine dollars. Yeah. Okay, but so when, that that gift was from uh, I guess what would be our manager, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure she may have got a deal on it through Amazon because we did have a. Budget. I want to say on Prime Day it was, uh, or not Prime Day, but you know during Black Monday. Whatever it's called, Cyber, Cyber Monday, Chris, yeah. Black Friday. It's like basically now <laughs> He's a there, mess. there's no separation anymore. It like literally runs from Black Friday through Cyber Monday, and it's really it's yeah. really Thanksgiving Thursday through Black exactly Saturday Monday, and even now like Cyber the online rich. most I prefer the online lilac stuff, Wednesdays. Most of the online stuff hey. starts like days in advance. You got a lilac you know? shirt on, but um, ish, yeah. Yeah, I think when I looked on there, yeah. they were uh, they were twenty bucks because the actual Echo was like seventy bucks, which is usually ninety nine. Yeah, but the dots are pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, those are fun. I like that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, one coworker sent us, you know how they'll send around in our little areas. They'll send Christmas cards. Mm-hmm. Um, so the thing is, you know, in a corporate, is you get all your Christmas cards and you put them up. And one you do a, that. One sent a lottery ticket. 
Ooh. And I was like, what if <laughs> this is the one? And I promptly scratched. That might be a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, Casually just run out of the building. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> Don't say a word. It was one of those ones where, um, so it's it's part of the Georgia lottery and it could be anywhere else, but you uh, you get a serial number. Like your number is 12. Mm-hmm. So then you scratch it. If you find a 12 on the form, then you you win what you know, would be under it or whatever. You just described <laughs> Jumbo every, Bucks. Junior Jumbo Bucks. I was going to say, you just literally described every scratch game. <laughs> <laughs> match this number. <laughs> um, and I didn't match a number. So. We're doing Dirty Santa Sorry. on our floor. Uh-huh. I should do some lottery stuff. Well, the thing to do is... Of course, is, it would really irritate me if somebody won like $6,000. Well, what you do is you put the, the lottery ticket on like a pack of Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> so they get like toilet paper. Plus a lottery ticket. So it's like, okay. Did anyone actually go like true dirty? Like, no. Like, no, I think everybody was kind of – there's like, – when you say true, you dirty, true dirty, when Chris. there's true dirty, you're talking about like sex toys and things of that no, nature. No, no, no. I'm at, talking house about parties. like I'm, – yeah, I'm more of like for the corporate, like someone giving them like, all right, man, here's your $20 gift certificate to the dollar store <laughs> or like uh, right. Aaron yeah. one year – at one of the ones we did, like literally had his dog chew up his homework and then like wrapped it up into a huge box and everything. And when he got to the end, it was just shredded homework. See, that's not right. Cause if you end up with that one, that would, that would suck. He but, ended up giving him also a gift card afterwards. Yeah. So but, then if yeah. you, yeah, but, yeah. but during the moment you think you've only, got it's funny. Homework. It's funny. Did you make yourself a note for the uh, lottery tickets? Yes. Yeah. There you go. As, as you should have, John. Well, I have not to change the subject. I oh, know it's fine. I mean, it's, I'd like to know how Chris feels. Oh. Living in a world uh-huh. where a Transformers movie sits at a 96 on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it's early, but, I, you know, <laughs> it didn't surprise me. Like, when I saw the trailers for that, I was like, oh, they're finally making a Transformers movie. That kind of makes sense, where it's like, it's not so much about, hey, there's people here trying to deal with the robots. And, um, you know, you have these two conflicting things of, like, the robots are trying to have their battle but at the same time, the people are trying to deal with the fact that there's robots here and it's a huge problem. And like you go off into four other side plots that are usually zany and, and don't hold up over the long run. And instead it looks like, <laughs> it looks like what would be the perfect formula for a Transformers movie. It's like, Hey, Bumblebee is on uh, a super secret you know, mission. Can I just well, wait and see the movie? <laughs> I haven't seen it, but Let me yeah, tell you like, what this th- movie's about. Yeah, here's yeah. a synopsis and plot but layout for the from, from, from the trailers. It looks like you know he gets sent to Earth uh, on a mission, it's right? E. And then and then yeah, it's e. and then yeah, you get wait, in bed to wait. the local and and they form a close relationship, and that's perfect for Transformers. E. T. was sent on a mission. Well, he was. He was left. He was left behind on a mission. That's because he's he's dumb. Mm-hmm. He should have got on the ship. <sighs> E.T. was scary at one point, wasn't it? You know, it? how do you feel that we sit in a world where the highest rated Marvel movie this year... Really? Nothing on the E.T.? We're just going to go right into Marvel? Yeah. Is, uh, is, uh, is okay. a Spider-Man okay. movie that's animated by people who got kicked off Han Solo. It's political. You do think that? You really believe that? <laughs> Nick see, Cage is th- in that What movie. I love about me yeah. and my relationship with you... Is you'll almost believe the sincerity of anything I say. No, Dude, it's it's more of like <laughs> Did you it's, hear you? It's the delivery, yes. Yeah. It's that and we're like he <laughs> what's, could what's be political. What could possibly I, we didn't know, be but political. it sounded legit coming from you. No, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Plus yeah. John Mulaney's in it. Hey, That's name drop week. alert. I've done that to you two weeks Ugh. in a row. <laughs> see, Have John you never Mulaney watched, was uh, a former writer on SNL. He was. He, Stefan. I was a guess, lucky guess. If I just unplugged the mic and ran out, mm-hmm. <laughs> do you think it, you would have to edit? Have you that? watched? Um, have you watched Big Mouth? On yeah. he's the tall, nerdy kid, like with the glasses, Andrew. Yeah, that's him. I that's I've seen his name. Yeah, he's and a I, fine guy. He was on. Went, oh, that's his name. And he I was did. on um, Late Night he's or a, Tonight Show. He's the got other a night. couple of stand-up special, a few stand-up specials on Netflix. I really know, he just, funny. He won I, an Emmy I, this year. I know. Yeah, you, we're just pretending you don't show. Is he the comedian that wears the suits? Yes. That that's a generalization. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those he talk about. <laughs> no. You know what I'm talking about, John. Yes, I know exactly. Yeah, that's he's, the guy. He's the only person with a suit, and he's the he only does one. His little, yeah, Take he, that. He does this thing, Chris. Mm-hmm. I effing know who John Mulaney is. That doesn't mean you need to be name dropped two thousand. <laughs> 
every time you get a chance. Name drop 2000. I'm sorry, I just know names. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just my thing. I'm a name dropper. That's what I do. And, head bob, head bob, head bob. And we might be getting another DC movie that doesn't suck. Yeah, it looks like it's at 76%. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we're talking about Aquaman. Aquaman. I'm more excited, I think, out of those three to see uh, Bumblebee. Mm. I think so. I, I agree with you. I've been, I saw, when I saw the Bumblebee trailer, I was like, I have the feels. Yeah, it, I, and there has Because I've always gone to see these movies for two reasons mm. Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. I could care, I could care less about anything else happening in that movie. I just like seeing those two on screen. It's what about Starscream? What if I, <laughs> he's a bad guy. <laughs> what if I told you I didn't watch The Last Night? I would I, say good. I don't know that I would say that's horrible, but <laughs> that's because I got I got tired of the same I don't know the same vibe of the other Transformers. The same movies. noise. It's like they're or, fighting again. This is happening again, and uh, the um the biggest issue I always had is they couldn't. And it, I don't know if it's their fault or mm-hmm. or what they were trying to do, but you you can't capture those fights the the way that you really need to. They found a way, I think, in the second or third one to really slow it down to show you things that were going on between the two robots. It's or called slow mo. Name yeah. drop. Yeah. I, I get it. I said, slow it down. I, I said the whole word, Christopher. See how I didn't just say Chris just then? Die. <laughs> <laughs> Only Robin calls me Christopher. That's a Winnie the Pooh joke. Who's Robin? Christopher. Robin. My mom. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Not a Winnie the Pooh joke. <laughs> now, my relatives used to call me Christopher Robin because of the fact that my mom and dad's name are Christopher and Robin. My name's also Christopher. So. Well, me and my wife call you Christopher. Your wife. Don't worry about it, Chris. I got it. <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, we should go see that together. And when is cool? When is, I, I, put yeah, it on, put it on the list. <laughs> when is BK coming down? He so we, hasn't said yet. So we can watch Apollo Creed two together. <laughs> if you guys want to go, <laughs> if anyone's interested in the uh, Spider Verse, it's Friday. I'm not going to see that one. Well, yeah, I know you waited on Black Panther forever. Great choice there. Do not <laughs> make the mistake of bringing up Marvel movies that. You know, I waited nominated for Golden Globe Movie of the Year. I can I can disagree <laughs> with a nomination. I gotta say, I they went were, back and watched Black Panther uh-huh. on Netflix, and I was like, this is nowhere near as good as Infinity War. It just is not. I I didn't like mm. it from the jump. I just didn't. Oh well, I I, I like it. I do. I because I, uh, I, I think I have such a like I've seen the Thor Ragnaroks of the world now, <laughs> and they're just to me they were so much better. I thought you didn't like Thor. Love, well, I no, Ragnarok's love. Let's go to good. tape. Love Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok's we don't have tape. Good. This is digital. Um, I like Ragnarok a lot. And Justice League is <laughs> just better than everything. There's a lot right, to Darren. like about Justice League. It's so good. There's a I lot to movie. like. You do not hate that movie. I tolerate it. There's, but... way, there's way too much to like about that movie. You Let's can put... say it's not a perfect movie, which it yeah, I guess not, but. of of all the ones I hate, man of man is uh, Superman versus Batman. That that one's terrible. Doctor uh, Strange and uh, love. That I would movie. say that and That's and good. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> dang it, I've forgotten their name already. Freaking Deadshot and Harley Quinn. Um, dang it, what's their stupid let him, name? Let them hang. <laughs> Don't say a word. I'll just name them all. Enchantress is in there. <laughs> yeah, she was the main villain. Yeah. Yeah. Killer Croc was in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is painful for some people, but not for me. I can't I'm remember. living in ecstasy right now. But yeah, that movie is, is garbage to me. We cannot move on. Makes you um, want to kill yourself, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe yeah. by suicide? Suicide Squad. That's it. <laughs> Jeez, Chris. See, I can get there, though. Yeah, well, a little help, a little step stool to reach that cabinet. Two steps. I will get there. I say suicide. Two steps. I say kill yourself. He's like, yeah. look, something <laughs> like that. I tried to, uh, I tried to block out of my memory. Understood. It was very painful to watch that movie for me. I, I hated. I it. just hated the way they did it. But I mean, but it's their, it's, it's their interpretation, man. It's like, <laughs> um, I yeah, Doctor Strange is okay. It's definitely a flat one to me. I agree. Um, I really flat one like flat like it like after I walked in I was like or walked out I was like okay that happened you yeah know, that happens it, to me with every other Marvel movie yeah there's a lot of them where I'm like it's not that they're bad movies it's just that in the long run you're like how much can I really be shocked and mind blown for me so, both Captain America's mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok and Doctor Strange are easily my top four. Now you I know there's been. I haven't thought about my uh, top four in a long time. You said both Captain Americas. There's love, been there's been three Captain Americas. The first two. Okay, you didn't like Civil War. <laughs> I don't acknowledge it. 
doesn't exist. <laughs> and now my name drop. You know, because because <laughs> he decided he doesn't like Iron Man. Yeah, and I know he didn't just decide it. It's a thing. I get it. It was like even this week with the you we know they like dropped Iron the Man. they oh, dropped the trailer. We don't like Iron Man. Captain America and Tony Stark hate each other. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's that whole thing. Even like with the trailer this week, I was kind of like, it's like a big plot line. <laughs> the trailer, the new reveal, I was like, eh, okay, we'll get to that when we get to it. Cause like the opening thing, I'm like, well, Chris, this is, it's all BS. I'm like, I'm not worried about it. Tony Stark saying goodbye to his love. I'm sure he's going to die on that spaceship. <laughs> My biggest thing is the Easter eggs they left in that trailer that you go back and all the people dissect. Mm. I like it. You should go check that out. Just, just search Easter egg from that movie. I, I will give him congrats for finally making Hawkeye look B.A. for like five seconds there. I was like, look at you looking all like Oliver Queen and Arrow-esque. He's got a sword and everything. I did knew you, who Oliver Queen was. I, did, I was you, no, I, did you get to see Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yes. I really. I like that movie. I dug that, that one. Movie was That's great. a fun movie. That was a yeah, good movie. That's a fun movie. <clears throat> Kate. I like that one. She was I amazing. Like War. I follow her. On, I started following her on Instagram because of that movie. Yeah, because yeah, of that one. Because the- <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. Yeah, I, I don't know. <clears throat> and more will come out, and I'll go see it, and hopefully it will entertain me. Yeah. And I'm kind of I'm trying to go into Aquaman with an open mind. I'm like, hey, they're giving me. Uh, it's got some good talent in that movie. Yeah, and they're pulling out some big Aquaman villains there. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, uh, yeah. I I installed a new mail- mailbox this weekend. That that's what you're leaning with, huh? Like Yahoo Mail, <laughs> Google Mail, mailbox. It's a yeah, yeah. thing you set uh, on a post. Like an Outlook like account. What'd you do? Somebody knocked off. Uh, <laughs> somebody knocked down my mailbox Thursday. Oh, that sucks, man. And I looked down and I was like, "That's a cliche." If I've ever seen one, because I just didn't realize that was a thing unless it was TV or movies. It does happen. So you get them destructive. Or it kids. could have been just the wind. No. You don't know how good your mailbox was in the ground. It appeared to be in there good. Was the steak broken? See, the steak was bent. Yeah. Plus, there was a, like... the fact that there was a steak in it, I was like, why is there a steak? Mm. Why not just lay it with concrete, you know, get it in there real good, nice <laughs> and deep? Well, that's why you get those people who build the brick ones because they don't want anyone messing up their mailboxes. Yeah, Bricks can be knocked over. That's true. True. Not without some pain, Look, though. dude. <laughs> well, that's... Did you do it? Did you get a post hole digger? Mm-hmm. Um, did you get a? You did do that. I had to rent one. <laughs> yeah. Well, not we all don't have those. You should have got. A, you should have got a little auger. Oh, really? Walk to the back real quick. Auger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think of the weather this weekend, that's was, what I was dealing was with. Terrible. I was, I was out there in the nasty. Can't you just set your mailbox like on the curb and just <laughs> put it in there? Because <laughs> it is a federal law to steal have, someone's mail. Well, it is. It's also a federal law. You have to have your. You have to have a mailbox that sits. Between forty-one and forty-five inches. That's another true statement from the curb for the mail delivery folks. Otherwise, mm, short. I I honestly think that the mailman or woman knocked it over. Person, I really do. Because who, who else? Well, unless somebody was really trying to make that U-turn in your little I mean, cul-de-sac, yeah, dead in area. Couple fast. couple of things just come to mind. Someone's drunk. That yeah. that would be the first one. But why would they be driving um, there? Well, male people are unionized, so they can <laughs> because they go down because they're drunk and they go down a cul-de-sac and the wrong like, road. Yeah, yeah, and then next thing you're like, I just turn around now and go somewhere. That happened. Um, <laughs> and then or or I hate to say it, kids, kids go out there. Man, like I remember, I woke up one morning uh, when where was it? Where were we living? It was when we were in Pine Mountain. And like three of our neighbors, someone had gone through the night and clearly had probably taken a baseball bat and just every post. You know. Yeah, but I've heard them hitting the actual mailbox with a bat. Some do that. Some those are dumb kids who hit the post in the dirt. I know some people have done that too. Like, dude, hit the mailbox. I will say though, my mailbox was asking to be knocked down. Why? It was leaning. Lean with it, rock with it. It was old. You it was know. like you Mike Tyson in the tenth you round with about, Buster you don't Douglas. Know about it, do you? Okay. No, <laughs> no, I don't know that song reference, Sean. But, I know yeah. more than you think I do. I know, and then Chris made you hate music. That's true. <laughs> uh, it was it was dead long before I arrived. I don't think so. <laughs> hmm. What the? F- he's just robbing you. Yeah, and he's. I thought you said I could have some. Yeah, pre-show. <laughs> you don't go in someone's sour patch bag during the show. 
What kind of world is this? <laughs> anyway. Um, really? Besides you that. You better have something good right now. I started watching Homecoming. Boo! <laughs> have you watched it? Yeah, I finished it. Weird so far. I'm, that, out, I'm on the fourth episode. That's Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. That's my name drop for the day. Hmm. Wow. Deep. Yeah. yeah. That's what I do. That's what I bring um, to the table. Oh, Walter. What about Sissy Spacek? <laughs> you want to go there? Who's that? Her mother. <laughs> uh, you know, when I when I see Sissy Spacek, I go, huh. Oh, she's everything, familiar. Everything I see her in, she's always like... <laughs> Where's the pig's blood? Everything I see her in now, it I seems like it. she's a uh, disgruntled mother who just chain smokes. And that's, that's exactly true. what she does in that's this. True. Yeah. She's, she's got that down pat. <laughs> Wait till she gets her record player fixed. So you both She was uh, fixing it in this episode. <laughs> you both tinkering with Smash? Uh yeah. That's right. next week though. It's, we right. can't talk about that. Right. That's taboo. We, we can. Uh, we can let it, them know that we know it's out and we have the, it. Um, I have Snake. Is the online Working good. I, I haven't not even opened it. <laughs> I'm in the single player. I haven't played anything. Oh, yep. I've only bought the game. I did convince one uh, Ryan Leaf to pick it up. Really? I was talking to him. You didn't. I, I think he was waiting, but like I, I, I tried to do my best, and I was like, "Hey, you should get this because the single player mode is like way no, up his alley." You're right. Because I, I did ask him if he was getting it. Yeah. The first time I ever saw it was Smash Brothers, he was playing it. First time I ever played Smash Brothers was at his house. Yeah. Remember Seahawks game, and uh, possibly yeah. Remember because we went uh, over Panther there for Seahawks, Seahawks. Yeah. yeah, and then we laughed at him, and then <laughs> we had some Papa John's and he played Smash Bros. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Hmm. But uh, I said, "Hey, are you getting it? You know, it's mm-hmm. supposed to be the best one ever." And he goes, "No, I don't know." And I said, "Well, I was kind of hoping you would, mm-hmm. so we'd have a lot of people that we could play online against or whatever, and go yeah, there. do some three player battles, right?" And he was like, uh, "Well, I don't know." And then I think you did get to him and say, "Hey, by the way, it does have a single player." Mm-hmm. And he ended up eyeing me and telling me, hey, it's got a single player, so I'm in. So, Yeah, I, I, I saw he was on last night playing, so I that's why I presume he's doing. Because as soon as I started playing it, like we know Mike in a way that, of course, the, the listeners don't. Mike is a guy, if you have a game that's like, go grind this thing and level it and just keep yeah. doing, kind of like doing a lot <laughs> of the same thing. He does not <laughs> mind doing repetitious uh acts in a game he just you know well he's the guy who when he played legend of zelda had to go get every stupid korok seed yeah even though it was completely unnecessary you get zero you know? anything for it right like you get a piece of poop but um <laughs> yeah he has to what he calls 100 percent the game if he plays it exactly so uh, he's been playing call of duty black ops 4 um, and he has the worst stats ever for a player that, to get something called dark matter. Yeah. Which is when you unlock basically all camo for every weapon, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he just put in enough time. That's to, what he does. To, to unlock all that, but it's not like he got there fast because <laughs> he's not very good. He just <laughs> sucks. I love him though. <laughs> yeah. He won't listen to this show so I can talk yeah. mad junk. I'd be like, Hey, tune in to uh, between 20 and 23 minutes listen to Sean talk about how good you are on Call of Duty. Let's see who you want to go with lunch next week. <laughs> he doesn't go to lunch anymore anyway. Yeah, not really. Screw that guy. Yeah. Food. Boo. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Back on the food. Just where we started, Chris. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm steak. excited for today's topic. Oh, uh, are you? What's kind of. Wait, we're doing a topic okay. today? Uh, yeah. Is it topic time? <laughs> Topic time, 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 time. The topic is just cause four. Rico, you know, Chris. Rico, when you're doing the topic, you should have some one of us say the topic is. I think it's only fair. I gave you the news. <laughs> yeah, willingly. You give, you give them an inch. Almost, they almost, wanna, I almost said really bad words. <laughs> you want to edit the show too? <laughs> wait, let's you, go to your apartment. Wait, you edit the show? Take Penny. <laughs> take Penny. Please. Take um, Penny. <laughs> can you pull up some video of it? Here's the peanut butter. Take her. <laughs> I just want to see it, or is it not going to be talked about long enough for it to matter? <laughs> What's the matter? I wanted to see the game. It just it really enhances Oh, oh hey, there's that. Yeah. Yeah. Dead Cells, huh? John Mullaney, that guy. Mm-hmm. There he is. Really That's funny. the guy. He does the really good shtick. 
Clarissa he, thinks he's hilarious. He's pretty. Yeah, I love him. He's pretty uh, funny. He did a off Broadway show, or no, it was actually a Broadway show with uh, <clears throat> Nick Kroll, the our guy from yeah, from Big called, Mouth. It's called uh, Oh Hello, where they're these like two old guys that always have way too much tuna fish, <laughs> and they just bring on guests like Steve Martin or whoever and talk about tuna. <laughs> I think, or what is it? It's called their, the segment on the show is called too much tuna. And that's what it is. Why? What, what the hell? What? Um, this apparently said, look, hey, there we go. It says this game is just too much fun. <laughs> so you're, who you're clicking on? What's that guy's name? The rad Brad part one, the rad Brad part one walkthrough. If you want to follow along. On YouTube, Ooh, uh, uh, Ooh. the game does look great. Why are you, um, why are you touching yeah, that's my shirt? A mixed thing. But uh, we'll get to that. I made John so, thirsty. Yeah, Just Cause. <laughs> um, for those who have never played a Just Cause game, uh, it is the adventures of one Rico Rodriguez, who uh, is basically <laughs> there is a Steam review for Just Cause Three. I think that adequate. Adequately, ah, can't say that word. Adequately. Thank you. Uh, describes it well, which is this game is like Michael Bay directing Spider-Man who has trained James Bond. <laughs> and that's accurate. That is like completely accurate. It is over the top. It has crazy like gliding and, uh, like attachment and swinging physics, right? Uh, and it has many, many explosions and many gadgets. In crazy guns and everything. News. <laughs> um, but I, um, somebody asked me today. I said, "Yes, he's uh, the main guy. Is his name's Rico, and he's like, you know, of the Hispanic descent." Yes. And he was like, "Why? Why is he? Why is his name Rico? And why is he his, Hispanic?" And I didn't really know the answer to that, but apparently, I missed the answer to that, which was um, just cause. Yeah, just cause. <laughs> just why not? Cause. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so the idea of the series is that Rico was a guy who was recruited by the CIA and placed into a part of it called the agency, which the agency is, <laughs> the agency is known for, or its chief responsibility is basically regime change. They go into countries with dictators that they think are over the top and they take them down from within. You know, that's, that's okay. what they did. So that was the first two games. And then at the end of the second game, he left the agency. And he went back in the last game to Medici, which is where he grew up. And he uh, decided to overthrow the dictator there. Uh, and now in this just game. For, just because? Well, why not? It's his people. They're being That's tortured. True. That's you true. Know? Uh, and then in the fourth game, he is now in Sali, I think is the name of the country. I don't know. These Some, are all fictional. Yeah, places. they're all fictional. This one's supposed to be in South America, uh, where he is looking for his father, who is believed to have at one point worked for the Black Hand. Who are the Black Hand, you say? They're Wait, kind of like yeah, the main <clears throat> shadow organization throughout the series. Like they're not in the second game, but they're in the first and the third game. And they're kind of like a, uh, an army for hire. That basically, like, the trade-off is, hey, we'll help you out, like all these dictators, but you either have to give us access to something that we need for technology or just let us do what we want in your area, like, as far as tests and all that. It's all kind of very cliche and over the top, and I think that's the point. Uh, and, and as far as the story is concerned, I'll tell you now, people do not play Just Cause for the story. No, they like, play for the... <laughs> Yeah, the actual gameplay, the craziness of the gameplay. <laughs> and to be fair, like as you see the cutscenes and you see the way they're animated and they look in the script and everything, um, it's very clear that's not where the focus is. Like there are times like during these cutscenes that the frame rate drops and it's just it looks like a game that could easily have been late stage Xbox three sixty in terms of like uh the cutscenes. Yeah, yeah, the cutscenes, I would say. Uh voice acting's fine, but you know, the main reason people play these games, though, is that at its core, Just Cause is two things. It's a completely or a very destructible environment, right, that has, like, massive towers that you can pull down to huge fuel tanks that you can blow up and all these crazy things, right? But then it's also a physics engine. So you are given a bunch of tools to use all these things that blow up and manipulate them to your heart's content. 
So uh, the idea is, I wonder if that can blow up. Yes. Chances are it can blow up. Yeah, well, you always know. See how it, if it has red on it, it can blow up. It can You can do whatever the heck you want with it. Um, you just have to have enough, I guess, mind <laughs> to figure out a way to make it blow up with whatever tools you have unlocked and, at the time. Um, so previously, when the game started, Rico just had guns and, and a grappling hook. And then the third one added in uh, a wingsuit, right? And now it's kind of all... And he's always had like random tech things that have come along with it that are tools. And now this has kind of all been combined this time where the idea is that all of your technology resides in your, your grappling hook, except for the wingsuit part of it. So he's Batman. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, that's one way to look at it too. So he has a grappling hook that basically... As they're seeing right now, you can use it to zip around, get up high. You know, um, if you're using the wingsuit, you could like hit it at the ground and then like pull to give yourself more speed. Um, if there's a helicopter above you, you could just fire it at it and then you'll shoot right up there and, you know, open up the cockpit and take over, throw the pilot out and boom, you got yourself a helicopter. Mm. Um, but that's the simple level. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, then you get, you start to get a couple of things, two of them that are returning. The most popular is you can take the, uh, grappling hook and tether it to two different things and then tell the, the tether to retract. So like, say you have a door and you want to pull it off, you would tether it to the door and then you might tether it to the ground a little bit out and then tell it to contract the door gets pulled off because, you know, hmm. you're not going to pull physics. it to the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have thrusters that you yeah. can. <laughs> oh, what? what yeah, this is, this, this is fun. <laughs> so, like, my favorite pastime when I'm bored is I go into a field now and I find a bunch of goats and I just start tethering these uh, these thrusters, these rocket boosters, whatever you want to call them, to them. And oh, once geez. you once you put, like, eight of them on, you just go click. And, and they go shooting about 300 feet up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and come falling you back get a trophy for that <clears throat> uh no no but missed opportunity um and then the new one for those who played Metal gear solid five i think you'll kind of understand this uh you have balloons that you can tether onto things and and like of course with enough balloons and given the weight you can lift items off the yeah. ground right yeah mm -hmm. so event you know like that's the basics of it and Dang. Penny's like yeah i love this toy Come here. She's like, but Dad, I want to play with that toy. Um, You'd think the squeaky toys would be put up on Podcast yeah. Tuesdays. You'd think Rico would have a squeaky toy. Right? You would think people would arrive on time, too. <laughs> oh. Oh, I don't know. You, you're a little late. <laughs> <laughs> but then we talked for 38 minutes about things I know, we don't I know. discuss. Look. So but you we, can eat a fat. Oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but yeah, like, so you eventually start to experiment. Like, early on, my go-to was, as I was talking about, like, with helicopters, um, I would always just tether up and, and take over them and use them to my heart's content. Well, after a while, I kind of realized that just doesn't work that well, especially mm -hmm. with some of the objectives that are going on. So I started, like, if a helicopter shows up now, instead of wasting a rocket on it or anything, I just start shooting the booster uh, tethers to the bottom of it till I get about five of them, and then I activate them, and it the amount of thrust is too great yeah. for <laughs> for the helicopter to, to keep a stable control, and eventually it just flails around till either the boosters give out, and then usually gravity takes over and it crashes, or it just pushes it into a mountain or something, and it blows up instantly. Um, I've done that. I've tethered, I've tethered fuel tanks to, um, to like, to what you call planes as they're flying by and then just had them lift watch up him, until they scroll. crash in. <laughs> um, one of my favorites I've tethered, I start like, there'll be a chain of four people in front of me that are all shooting. So I'll tether the first one to the second one, the second one to the third one, third one to the fourth. And then I hit activate and they all go shooting up on a rope. Basically it's very Batman looking because <laughs> they're all tied to one another. Um, but yeah, it's about creativity because, um, what 
Just Cause does very well, and I think what people enjoy most about it is that it continually is ramping up, Look, like how much, like how much is coming <laughs> at you. Like they've made Rico a god in this game. Like pretty much as long as you're moving, you don't have too much fear of death outside of just getting knocked down by big things and not taking care of them. Um, if you're able to move, he heals very, very quickly. So it's kind of more of like, Hey, we're going to keep tossing more and more at you and you need to see if you can figure out how to deal with it. And it's not going to just work to sit there and shoot, you know, with every single person. So people talk about video games as a representation of the power fantasy. Mm -hmm. So this is the poster child of the power fantasy. Yeah. Just cause. Absolutely. Right. I mean, why not? The scale of this game is pretty awesome. Sean, you were looking at what I was, that huge platform he was on. Yeah. It looked like it was the size of 10 football fields. Yeah. Um, the scope of everywhere he goes. Um, if you, Basically, I remember. There's nothing right now. I think I played yeah. the demo or something on Just Cause 3. And um, when you get to a place, it's so, so big. <laughs> That's what she yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, I, was Just Cause 3 a, a PlayStation game where you could get it for free at one point? Yeah, it was on uh, PlayStation Plus. I think that's why I have I it. I might have it. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, worth checking out. Um, it's, you know, it's a huge map, very large map. And um, as such, there's helicopters, there's jets, there's there's all sorts of different vehicles to play around with in this game from tanks <laughs> To like construction equipment to just about anything you can and you think can of. operate them as opposed to just blowing them up. Yes, yeah, pretty much if it's in the game, you could probably bet uh, that you're going to be able to. Hmm. I'm trying to yeah, decide. It would, it would Sean, be dumb I, if you couldn't. Yeah, I'm trying to decide if this game is beautiful. I don't know. Uh, it seems uh, like it. It seems like it can be. Like like that like that console right there that he's sitting yeah. in front of. It looks like something that could be in the 360 era. Yeah, when you're up close in this game and anything. Um, but the explosions look like amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like when you're up close as far oh. as things in your world, it's, it, it's, <laughs> oh my it's God. debatable how good it is. You know, like that's. But see, watching this stream right on ah. YouTube, our, our, last week we walked in and you were playing this game and it looked amazing. Yeah, it did. It did. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like for some reason, the scale and you don't know but, what the person but I was, putting it on. I was more, yeah. I was more uh, like obsessed with the the crap he was doing in the game. Like, yeah, it's kind of when you're up close to anything in this game, it doesn't look great. But when you're flying around the world, mm -hmm. or as Sean pointed out, like explosions and just destruction, that's where this game looks great. Um, you know, people don't seem to get this, and it's something to put that's important. This isn't like say. God of War, right? Where everything is designed to a frame. This is a physics engine with tons of destructible <laughs> environment. And like, given the amount of craziness that could be going on in the scene at any moment, like, you can't make the you game. Make, you have to compromise. Yeah, you have to have a concession here because it's not like Avalanche Studios, the guys who make this, have so much money that they can, you know, go out there and, and just freely spend it and you know they're not rock star right you know they're not yeah. ubisoft they don't have a thousand people that they can just call and be like you fix this they're people <laughs> in sweden <laughs> um, in sweden <laughs> but yeah it's fun um yeah i've i've had pretty good fun with it the story is what it is um but it definitely i think most people will who played just cause three and play this one, there is going to be a little bit of sense of deja vu in this one, mm. in the sense that like a lot of the destructible stuff looks like it's pulled directly out of um, Just Cause 3, like the shapes and, and all that you see. It seen, did which seem is like fine. a quick turnaround. Yeah. Um, well, maybe I was just imagining that. But. I have to imagine, I think the idea of this game was, uh, for those who didn't play Just Cause 3, especially when it mm. launched last time, so Just Cause 3 on PC ran great. But when it came out on Xbox 360 and PS3, it struggled, like, which is really sucks for a game like this, you know, when you're trying to cause all a, this, this destruction. It was an Xbox One and I thought a PS4 it was. game, but it was also yeah. on 360 and uh, PS3. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or no, no, I don't think it was on 360. It was, I'm sorry, I meant to say Xbox One. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. That's yeah. my bad. Yeah. Um, Way to go, guy. <laughs> see, it's called owning it. <laughs> um, but when, um, uh, when it came out, like the frame rate, when you would get into truly destructive scenes would just completely drop. 
which when you're being <laughs> shot when you're being shot at at the same time very intently in 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 great amounts right it just it made some missions really painful and almost near impossible to play uh as you progress so they've worked on it and they improved it definitely like when it went free to play on uh PlayStation Plus I came back and played again and I have to say it was holding up a lot better but it's clear that I think their goal this time was to make a game that no matter what was going to hold up as you were playing the game itself and to their credit this thing is on consoles it's locked at 30 frames per second and it doesn't feel like it ever maybe dips when you're actually playing the game uh, below like 25 or 20 frames, which is solid then, you know, it's pretty much, I would say 90% of the time always operating at that 30 frames per second, which is great. Cause you feel like you're finally playing this just cause game that you've wanted to play since three. And you do feel like they've given you so much more freedom for, uh, exploration as far as the destruction and the environment and how you set it up. But the other thing they've done is they've also traded off what it means to destroy the environment, which I'm not quite as sold on. So in just cause three, you would explore the map and you'd find these destructible areas and you were encouraged to stop because basically to take over the region, you would have to be like, Oh, Hey, I found the hydro, the hydro plant. I need to go blow that up because it's going to say, you know, make the, the region less stable. And like you would see it like, Hey, you need to blow these eight things up in this region to say it's cleared. Um, and as you would go through, sure, it might be a very, a lot of repetition, but you could see very clearly your progress. They've changed it this time where the destruction stuff, it's there and it has a slight purpose, but the idea is that you are raising an army of chaos is what they call it. I believe. And you are consistently trying to move forward the front line of the army of chaos. All right. As you go through the regions, um, there are missions and things like that to do there that help to open the door to be able to make those places accessible. Um, but you also have to level up the army of chaos to get squads, which you can then assign to move into those regions. So, in leveling your army of chaos, destroying a power plant or something will give you a slight boost, but it's nowhere near feels like the amount of experience as doing one of the actual missions in the game will do it. So it feels like, yeah, the destructible stuff is there and it's, it's still cool and fun to experiment, but it doesn't feel like you're being guided to it by the natural gameplay and your objectives as you were previously. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but uh, it, it definitely, it's a little bit of a bummer, I would say, as someone who enjoyed the last one on that point. Is that is that a, is that a chief complaint overall with people? Um, I guess I've seen it out there. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't read too much on it. I was, I never, I never thought, and and I'm, I might be jumping the gun here, but I never expected this to be reviewed like God of War. But sure, when I saw the reviews roll in, I was a little bit taken aback by it. I wasn't too surprised. I mean, to me, this is like a classic 2A game. That's what this is. Because, I mean, Avalanche isn't a humongous studio, but and it's like they're not doing anything that's reinventing the wheel here, right? It's like they're just putting something out there that's really fun to play if you like these kinds of games, and that's cool. I think it's crazy how you do say it, and I I agree with you, I think, to a degree, that it's a classic uh, 2A game, but it's sometimes marketed like a 3A title because Square doesn't have anything else. That I know, this fall. I, I, yeah. yeah. And so, um, so you play it, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. Some of the stuff does like, look very yeah. Like looking at this, look at look at the background you of this. last week. Dark Siders three. Yeah. yeah, it's got that Dark Siders kind of graphic <clears throat> quality to it, where you go, this could be a mm-hmm. last gen kind of yeah environment, but. When you look at like this, this is where hey. this cutscene here, it just, everything around it to me looks ugly from a graphical standpoint. Yeah. It just looks low pixelated, you know, <clears throat> low resolution. Um, the animations, the way like her hair and everything looks, I'm like, this, yeah, this doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a game that came out. Yeah. And uh, someone said, Hey man, you know that uh, Assassin's Creed game that came out in 2012? Just pull the animations off of that. We'll make it exactly. work. Exactly. <laughs> yes. That's, yeah. I mean, and, and I don't mean that in disrespect to them. Um, 
but it, it's something that's clearly a part of it. Um, but <clears throat> it's still fun there. Just like before, there are tons of cha- challenges to do throughout the world. Um, there are like wing wingsuit challenges you can find. There are, um, speed and stunts and stuff like that. They're just there like, Hey, find this car, go this fast through this hoop, which is like, by the way, 500 feet off the ground. So figure out how you got to do that. Um, it, it's fun in that respect, but I think it's definitely a game that more than likely for most people, if you haven't heard of just cost three or just cost ever, maybe check it out. But if you have experimented with it and you were like, eh, it's fun a little bit, but it's not like groundbreaking in any way, then I don't think this game is doing anything that's going to win you over. But on the other hand, if you enjoy just cause and, and the things about it, then here is uh here's a new game for you. Um, there is one other big new element, I guess they put in this that they claim uh, there's weather events in the game, most notably uh, tornadoes. This kind of like ties into the plot. So the black hand in this one, their whole entire thing is that they have this weather technology and that's how they've taken over this, uh, or taken over this. Con- yeah. <laughs> taken over this, uh, country. Um, fool of a took. <laughs> right. <laughs> you. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I could have swore the other. I, I could have swore I heard people talking about tornadoes and weather. Yeah, in, yeah. In the in Just Cause Three, I thought they were talking about it then, but no, no. Um, there's this. There's lightning storms, and I want to say, at least I got the sense there were blizzards when uh, when I was up in the mountains uh, in this game. They had a Dairy Queen. They they did not. They did oh, not man, have those a Dairy Queen. Are delicious. Mm-hmm. They have to hold them upside down. You want to go so to Dairy you know. Queen. <laughs> Uh, but it is, um, yeah, the weather is interesting, but it kind of, is so weird. Like when it just shows up and you kind of know, especially with the tornadoes, which is the main one you're always going to encounter. Um, you kind of know they're coming cause like you can, st- apparently the tornadoes in, uh, Solis, they, they travel very great distances for a long time. <laughs> so you're just like, Oh, well that's going to be here in five minutes. Mm-hmm. And then it, and then it's here and you're like, all right, well, I'll just fly around and, and do what I need to. <laughs> I haven't, like, it hasn't felt anything game-changing. And I think, like, outside of maybe the first time you encounter it where you're like, whoa, and you don't know what to expect, after that, the novelty kind of wears off pretty quick. It's not like, say, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good example. It's not, say, like, when even, like, the storms first showed up in Red Dead Redemption where I was, like, riding around. I'm like, oh, wow, that just changed how this setting feels right now because my visibility is down and I can't do this and that that easily and I need or I don't have to worry about brushing my horse right now. Or so something. you're saying this game is nothing like Red Dead Redemption? It is unfortunately on the Red Dead scale. <laughs> it's coming in at zero Red Dead. Okay, okay. <laughs> this thing grabs a hold of us. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's the broke back scale. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> What am I going to do now? That's the Red Dead scale. Um, <laughs> but it's still fun. Um, that matters, man. You yeah. Play video games, turns out, huh? And it's fun. Like, <laughs> I have to say, like, this game feels like it's built for someone like Donkey. Like, I could just imagine Donkey sneaking around a base going, now we're going to do this to this guy and this guy. And then hitting activate and just the most crazy thing happens. Like, it's made for YouTubers. And I think that's why you see a lot of YouTube streams on this game for for something that's not nearly as popular as, like, say, I don't know, like Fortnite or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Just Cause always has had its pretty solid YouTube base out there. Um, well, how well do these games sell in general? I think they said the last one sold, like, two to three million, I want to say. Which is why there's a fourth one. Yeah. I mean, they <laughs> yeah. do fine. Yeah. And it's not like they always put them out, like, this time of year, yeah, they like do. where everything is, you know, the only thing it's competing against right now, uh, directly is, is smash really. Right. And that's not on the, they didn't release on Nintendo's console. And of course smash isn't on their console. So and it's a nice break. I guess if you've been playing call of duty and you, you want something a little bit more than just a, uh, a shooter, right. You want something a little bit more, but you love gunplay. Here's something for you to try. And this is where the game looks great, by the way. We're, yeah, we're finally, they're seeing them, him finally fly around the open world. And I think, even though there's like a ton of pop in and things like that, 
Um, again, limitations of the world. Uh, just as you look around, you're like, okay, this is nice. It feels like a real country. Um, I, I'll give them a lot of credit for that. Um, and you go through different environments and different biomes. There are huge cities here. There's actually one where uh, there's a monster truck stadium in the middle. Uh-huh. And you can get in the monster truck and do some stunts. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Well, and, very. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a, I think I'm a fan without having played any of the games for real. Mm-hmm. I like I like Just Cause being in our in our gaming universe. I for think, sure. I think I it just, needs it. I just respect. It's so hard to just, you know, out there when you're developing games, you want to make it unique. You want to make it you know, its own thing. But sometimes you can respect a developer out there who just says, we're just want to make a game that's very self-aware and mm-hmm. just fun. We're not trying to, we're not trying to, we're but, not trying to make you, we're not trying to be thought provoking with this, with this pretentious story. We're not mm-hmm. trying to, we're not trying to give you cutting edge graphics. We're not trying to recreate how it is to play a game. This is just, this is just a pure video game. See, like yeah. that. There you it's go. like, hey, just blow that door open. I'm almost um, thinking I'm not creative enough to play this game. Same. It's it like, helps. It would be lost on me to explode a goat. Yeah, because you're I'm, dumb. Well, no, I'm one, not. Cool. I don't like lamb chops. Wait, <laughs> that's a lamb. Uh, I don't like goat chops. <laughs> goat there you chops. go. You don't like goat curry. There we go. Goat curry. Is that a thing? Yeah, it is. Boo. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's like. As you said, there are parts of it definitely not original, but at the on the other hand, I don't know any other game that's like this at its core. Like, what other game can you just go, hey, there's a helicopter, well, let me just grapple on that one and then attach that to this building and blow it up. <laughs> you can't do that in Call of Duty, right? You can't do that in, in Battlefield or any well, other shooter. Blackout you can. Oh, can you? Yeah. You, you can grapple yeah. anything to it, huh? Pretty much. If you, and if and you, you, can, one, the class you can put the balloons on it. Yeah. And uh, you can tether it to something and, and retract hey, the tether. Hey, there's James Corden. Name there drop. he is. He's so excited. Look at it. the gifts. I'm British. <gasps> James Corden's so happy to get James Corden's gifts. It was a Keurig machine because that's his whole thing. Yeah. Got to make that money. Got to make that money. Mine's still the same money. Um, As far as a Richard. I'm going to I'm gonna say you're in the at least the seven range. Yeah, I, I've thought about it. Um, and... I'm going to say seven. Yeah, I'm going to say seven straight on the dot. I don't, I don't think this is a game like that I want to play all the way through, but it's like a game that as I play, it's fun, you know, and it's like a good way to just kill an afternoon. Like where I'm like, I just want to run around and be like, can I do this and see what happens? That's, that's all I want to do. I don't care. If Rico saves the day, I don't care. You don't? <laughs> I kind of care if Rico saves the day. Like, I don't think I even finished Just Cause 3. But I probably played about 25 hours in it. So, you know, it's not like I can't say I didn't get a fun time out of it mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. Um, But definitely of the things I've played this fall, it's not like the most memorable. Hey, you're better than Fallout 76. Good job. <laughs> oh, that, that's, <laughs> that's funny and unnecessary, Chris. <laughs> Take it, Todd Howard. Todd Howard would not be happy with you. <laughs> it is faster. <laughs> Over. Get Bill Gates in here. Um, but yeah, uh, that's out there. Um, yeah. Totally say, I, I will say this. If it comes to Games Pass or uh, Games of Gold or PlayStation Plus at some point. Or a price drop before uh, Christmas. Yeah, or you see it on sale yeah. and you just like third-person games and you or you like games with physics physics engines maybe that's the time to check it out definitely if it's on any of these like free to play or or you have a game pass subscription thing then i would say yes go check this game out uh otherwise there's probably a game that came out four days later that i would suggest you gone hey we may or may not there might be a topic next week we might the the last topic of the year huh yep it's the final topic Time, of the year. Time. Time. <laughs> we're retiring it. <laughs> what? No, we're not. <laughs> Boo. All right. All right. Pivot time and stuff. You guys want to do some news? Sure. Hot off the press and straight to your ears. Weekly Games Chat presents the news. One. <gasps> news! We did that well. Yeah, that was no nice. No beaks. That was nice. Like we've done this. 
John, oh my God, I'm sorry, it's listeners. God, yeah. If you have what I have, mm. and, and John doesn't because he doesn't know, mm. I know you want to kill John right now. Oh, it'll go away. Oh God, I'm gonna buy him like a camel that while he's sleeping just comes up to his ear and goes. <laughs> it's terrible, John. You're terrible the, than what he just did. Yeah, yeah that's ter- oh, the whole thing is terrible. <laughs> You're the Ricky Henderson Terrible. of the news this week, a.k.a. leadoff. Oh, uh, yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. So the first thing we want to cover is the game of uh, – <laughs> the game uh, – Every thing we time do you, is, Chris, it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> the game awards. We want to cover just uh, – it's not the entire list, but uh, let's go through it. Game Big of the here. year. Game of the year was God of War, which I think – What? Uh, yeah. You know what's crazy about that? You guys probably – I, I kind of figured. No, I got to give John some props because I don't. I don't know if he remembers this or not, but um, and I'm I'm totally stealing your new segment right now. But it's, okay. it's probably fine. We were after the show. What was it? I don't know. I guess two weeks or maybe a week before the game awards were going to air. We were all, of course, talking about what we think was going to win or whatever. And John, mm-hmm. John, basically at Arby's called mm-hmm. it. Yeah, he did say God of War. Yeah, and you were all Red Dead, Red Dead, Red Dead. <laughs> Hey, what won the most awards? Uh, probably Red Dead, but who yeah, what, who won the Grammy of games? It did. It did. Much like Kendrick Lamar got screwed in the end. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he thinks Kendrick. Yeah. But I want to give you your props, too, because oh, well, we're going to yeah, make it yeah. three for three years this year because it got nominated for Best Album of the Year again. Yeah, that should. Well, what's it up against? Um... I'd have to look. I can't remember. I'll we'll look it up. Yeah, man. But no, yeah. I just. I. I, I mean. I, I think. I think God of War overall. <laughs> oh. On many lists at the end of the year is going to show up as game of the year for a lot. Yeah, after a reflection. Yeah, I mean, I think once the hype died down for Red Dead, that's what not I would, take, not that's taking what you away, said. Yes. <laughs> I would probably not say, taken away from what is obviously the genius of Red Dead. I respect the heck out of that game. Mm. It's just. Um, remember when I gave it a thirteen? Yeah. It's down to like a nine now. <laughs> Still a respectable. Well, yeah, you have to play the game, <laughs> right? Which I have not <laughs> exactly. Done. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. I've, I've said this. I expect those to be the only two games that you consistently see. Mm-hmm. That like I think when you like Wikipedia has a page that houses all the game of the year mm-hmm. uh, winners from various outlets, and I'm sure when you scroll down to 2018, you're going to see on 90 percent of them. Probably either God of War or Red Dead Redemption 2, which is the way it probably should be. I mean, I don't have a problem with either one of those games winning. You might see some Celeste in there. Yeah, you mm. can see some uh, some trickling. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a Nintendo <clears throat> fanboy that puts Smash on there, and that's cool. So, um, continue, John. Sorry to didn't mean, but I just, you know. No, thank you. That's, that's, it would suck not... to have been on the losing end of that gift. <laughs> should, have put a, should have put money on it. Yeah. Best ongoing game was Fortnite. Uh, I don't think anybody was shocked by that. Best no. game direction was God of War, mm-hmm. and if there's one, if there's one, I would have put definite money on. I would have uh, put money on. Um, that was when I knew it was gonna getting. That was when I knew it was winning game of the year for them because at the same time they casually also said, and it's also one action adventure game of the year, which <laughs> was also against Red Dead. And I was like, well, if they've given it that. I was like, I don't know how. You could say they won head to head in that category. Well, and oftentimes then, action yeah. adventure and game of the year is like the compromise. Yeah. Let's give one here and let's give one here. So kind of like in the Heisman uh, Maxwell race, the guy or who, Tua. Yeah, well, you, if you give one, you don't necessarily get the other, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, that's the game direction. You had mentioned that God of War did the one camera. Did you guys? Yeah. Um, that was dope. Unless we're going to read all these, yeah, uh, we are. Well, I put them on page. Yeah, <laughs> okay. We're very short on the news this week, and but that's kind fine. of a big say deal. Say what you need. I was going to. Did you guys see uh, uh, what's his name? Roger Clark accepted his award. The guy who did Arthur Morgan. Yeah, I and it's think. really it's really weird to watch because if you played the game, I just always presumed it was a voice actor really putting a lot of emphasis to make that character work. Uh-uh. Not at that, all. That is how he that is. Roger Clark see, talking see, as Roger Clark. <laughs> to see Roger Clark just walking around in regular clothes going like, this is a real honor. <laughs> you know, you're just like, what? another, <laughs> another one that happened was when the uh, voices, 
from God of War came up. Kratos. Christopher Judge and I don't know the boy's name. And so they're doing their award, and then when it's time to announce the winner, he just sits, stands there quiet, the quietly, and then and then of course Kratos read it, boy, and the place <laughs> goes nuts. So that was cool. Best narrative, uh, He's about re- as big as Kratos too. Yeah. He was. yeah. <laughs> Best narrative, Red Dead Redemption Two. Well Best learned. art direction. Return to Oberdin. I have not played this game, but it keeps, it just popped up today on IGN's I've nominees never for game even of the heard year. of it. What I think it? it's a PC game. It like has a cool, mm. like classic. Think of, um. No, oh, I saw it, but like, where did it come from? I think PC world, man. That, that's what they <laughs> PC do. PC world, man. But, um, it has that cool aesthetic of like, from just looking at screenshots of it, it looks like kind of like a classic Game Boy game. Like the way it's colored, the way it would appear on your screen. So, that, and you I, won't I, play I mean, that? Hey, man, if it, if something's getting praise, I'll give it a shot. That's, what, that's the way. Oh, what? Am. What happened? Yeah, I will give it a shot. <laughs> I will give it a shot. <laughs> uh, best score was Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Uh, enjoyed the performance. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't, whoever the guy is, that collection of musical artists. Well, that was kind of a giveaway, too. It was very too, nice. Was when very they did w- that, because yeah. no other game really got to do that. The uh, main song that they sang, even though he wasn't there, Rim by D'Angelo. Go figure. Hmm. Huh. I was pulling. Fun fact. Right. <laughs> for best score, I was pulling for um, Octopath Traveler because I love that music that so good. much. It was good music, yeah. Um, but congrats to them. Best audio design, Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Uh, best performance, as Chris said, Roger Clark is Arthur, Arthur Morgan. Games for <laughs> Morgan. Why did you sound? Morgan. I don't know. <laughs> Arthur Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Games for Impact, Celeste, Yay! and uh, I think Chris, you've played. Uh, did you play this, Sean? No, and, uh, you and say, also won Best Indie. Like yeah, yeah. Say. you ind- <laughs> you indicated that it tackled the issue of mental yeah, illness, depression, um, and that speech when they won it was was phenomenal. Great. Yeah, he basically said, if you overcome something like depression, it's you. You did it. You I, can do I, it. I, I tell people, it was like, nice. People don't get it, like you know, for those if you've ever had a friend who's gone through depression, like that game is hard as hell, and I think especially the end of it mimics just how hard it is like to, uh, you know, to even begin to battle that topic. And they put that very well into a game. I thought very nice. Or you uh, put on easy mode, <laughs> like <old> best, <laughs> um, best mobile, mobile Florence, best VR, played. AR game, Astrobot yeah! rescue mission, yeah, best, game ever. <laughs> best action game, dead cells. Me, I had to message Jeff on that. Cause we were just like, yeah, cause we both love that game. That sells this blast. Best action adventure, God of War. Mm-hmm. Best RPG, Monster Hunter World. Best fighting game, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters or Fighter Z. I don't know. Fighters. Uh, Keely pronounced it Fighters, yeah. So Which was that's just the main highlights of, um, there were a bunch of e sports stuff yeah, they had this yeah. year. Sonic Fox won, uh, esports guy of the year. Ninja which was, won the best. Which YouTuber. is great when he came on stage in the Fox get up. I, I did laugh at that. And then he goes, <laughs> He goes, I'm gay, I'm black, yeah. and something else. And all the things Republicans, something. He was, yeah. he was, he was, he was genuine. He was very genuine. He was yeah. very excited. He was humbled. It was all kind of stuff. And like I said, Ninja also won, yeah, uh, for online persona or whatever it's called. But I, he was shocking no one. <laughs> yeah, he he was the best. Um, in addition to uh, the awards, there was also some announcements at the game awards, which were pretty cool. Um, this actually, the first one kind of got me going, huh, am I finally going to play another Far Cry? It was Far Cry New Dawn, which is set 17 years after the events of Far Cry 5, um, after the, of, of course, the greatest ending in video game history. <laughs> um, it is a, it, the, I think the ending, if, if you were kind of watching the, the trailer and you weren't sure the ending that showed a, a hint of someone, Shows that it's a clear standalone sequel to Far Cry Five, and it's coming um, early. I guess they're going February fifteenth. The, um, they're going with the ending where you uh, decide to engage the end game and not walk away. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> and that was that guy at the very end. That was your bad guy. That was yeah. That's, Jake, that's is it Jacob or Je- Joseph? Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, C. Father Joseph. Uh, yeah. Persona Five's <laughs> Joker is coming as the first DLC character for Super Smash Bros. I was standing ultimate. In, I was standing in line. Uh, for Smash Bros. when that broke, and I first they, off, they if you want to see like the upper echelons of like true nerd culture, go to a Smash release. But second, I have never seen people go so crazy over the fact that like apparently everyone who plays Smash is also a huge Persona fan, so they were going crazy for this. That's nice. dope. The character looked awesome, even though I have no idea who it is. Um, a new Dragon Age was teased with the trailer. 
that had a hashtag, hashtag the dread wolf rises. Yeah, this is kind of what I expected they would do. Um, so for those who didn't finish the last one at the very end, Solus is revealed to be the dread wolf and that he's bringing that back. So that's obviously where they're going for the next one, which is really cool. Didn't show much. I think they've teased that they have more to show coming this month, but like they're going to do it on their own day type thing. So, um, and for me, one of the coolest game announcements, which dear God, there were a ton of world premiere slash game announcements world premiere for this, for this show. Um, but when the, the creator, if you will, of Mortal Kombat comes out, he's going to do an award possibly for best action. I forget what one, which one it was, but, uh, the lights go out and the lightning flashes. And then the Mortal Kombat symbol comes up, and then you see a fight. As soon uh, as I saw him on stage, I was like, there's no way he's just announcing it. Right. He did, a no winner. way So you <laughs> see this epic fight between Raiden and Sub Zero, uh, not Sub Scorpion. And, yes. uh, the, uh, Raiden gets the best of, of Scorpion in that one, but immediately a new Scorpion comes in, and it basically is along the lines of who's next or whatever. Yeah. Get the, over here. The fight will just continue, and it looked, it looked really cool. The crowd really liked that, so that was dope. Uh, and it's got a, um, uh, it, it is, uh, as John put it, was announced with a new violent trailer. It was very violent. Yeah, it's I think kinda, I said May. Uh, I 2019, say. yeah. I think it's going to yeah. be May-ish, so that's good. Um, Rage 2, if you remember the talk of Rage 2 from, I believe, E3. <laughs> um, it's going to get an, it got a new trailer and with a release date of May 14th, and I'll say that it looked, it looked okay. It looked yeah. pretty good. It was, it looks the, like Rage. The colors were very, um, vibrant. Vibrant. There was a lot of, there was like heavy pink action and it looked cool. It yeah, really, it really did. I actually, I never played Rage One, um, and I may play Rage Two, so we'll see. I tried to play Rage One, didn't go long. <laughs> Remember the guy that was performing at E3's Bethesda stage, Andrew the WK. Key? Yeah, you you said something hysterical about him, which will fall flat on the audience because I don't remember what it is. But I just oh, yeah. wanted you to know. You thought of that when you saw that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 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 a side Eon. <clears throat> That's Obsidian. <laughs> Obsidian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that come being funny, Chris. Can I just say Obsidian? Obsidian. You could. Obsidian announces The Outer Worlds. It's a new sci-fi RPG from the creators of Fallout and the developers of Fallout New Vegas. They, they let you know that for sure. Um, it was coming to all platforms for 2019. Let me just That's say. Big. It looked let me, dope. Let me just say, you know that, you know that, um, GIF mm. or whatever of Homer Simpson backing into the bushes. Yes. Mm. That's Bethesda right now. <laughs> when they saw that, they were like, oh, oh crap. Yeah. Nah, they'll be fine. <laughs> they, they will be, but uh, this. From a public relations standpoint, everybody sees this and goes, they let these guys go? Well, no, 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 no. These were, okay, so Obsidian uh, were, the people who formed Obsidian were a different studio uh, before, and they owned Fallout, and they made Fallout for many years, and eventually the studio closed, and but that's the bought the rights to fall out. So that's how they came in the possession of it. And then they went and formed obsidian. That's why that was why directly when uh, they made fallout new Vegas, they reached out to them to say, Hey, you guys should make a fallout game because you know, we know you guys made this. So. And what did Bethesda game studio, what did Bethesda do mm. to obsidian when the game came out? They said, you know, if you get an 85 on Metacritic, you mm-hmm. get a bonus. Yeah. It hit 84 on Metacritic. Sorry. They got snubbed. <laughs> oh, yeah. well. Politics. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the last announcement we'll cover would be the new Fortnite feature. Um, it's called The Block was announced. And that's a thing where you can design your own area and actually have them featured. Have them features. Um, um, and focused as a platform in the game, they were, they were going to remove one area yeah. and then the, the block will be there. And every time the map loads up, someone's block will be there. And it's, it's, it's going to be fully immersive. It's going to be cool. That guy was very excited and very humble about all the love and support and continual play that people are giving Fortnite. So now there were some announcements John left off here and I just didn't have time to write you back. So I just made note of them. Um, I thought the big ones that maybe people were also talking about Epic games with their launcher, came out swinging at the game awards uh journey coming to the pc for the first time exclusive through epic's uh store um they announced hades which is giant um ah, the folks who did uh bastion and all theirs and their new yeah, yeah like uh in the game i love last year i can't remember the name la- right now for whatever reason uh but like their new game hades is in early access uh exclusively through them they announced Ashen was coming out that night and it came out on games, uh, games pass 
and exclusively on the Epic Store. So they are coming in hot on that and trying to make a push. We'll see if it ends up being something. Mm-hmm. But uh, And then the other thing was uh, the guys who did Abzu. Uh, they announced their new game, which I can't remember the name of right now, but it's like kind of like it looked a little bit like Shadow of the Colossus in a way. Like um, at least I got the vibe of Shadow of the Colossus where it was like um, almost looked like a Chinese woman like running through and like there are mystical dragons and stuff and she's fighting them and, and there's she a, had bird. a bird. She, yeah. yeah, her eagle. Yeah. That, that game looked really dope. It looked really pretty. Yeah. So. Um, a lot of cool little indie announcements out there. And that's what I like about the game awards is like, that's a great place for a lot of these games to go to, because obviously if they were to go to E3, if all three people were actually there, more than likely they get like five seconds on stage and they're forgotten <laughs> in the slew of other things. Whereas here they actually get a full trailer. Well, I got to hand it to Jeff Keighley this year. He made this, he made this show look professional. Oh. He made, I got he, different thoughts on it. <laughs> Oh, and, yeah. and the big, the big moment at the beginning. That I, I was going to touch that, on that, that was that was that was quite awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, 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 to me, the highlight of the whole night was the beginning where mm-hmm. um, Phil, Reggie, and Sean come out, and they basically have this thing about the, we just we love gaming and yeah. come together type moment. You don't ever see those three on the same stage no. together making the same speech. I, I did joke to you, I believe. I said the next day, I said. You know, that was a really cool moment. But on the other hand, Sean Layden looks like someone, like, literally <laughs> kidnapped his children. And we're like, go on the stage, Sean. I, I'm Sean Layden on PlayStation. Yeah. Um, please release my... Yeah. Uh, Reggie was just, like, up there, like, I have a game that's going to sell 5 million copies tonight. Like, tonight. I'm good, I'm yeah. Tonight. I'm wearing and Phil, shirt. Phil's like, I'm Phil Spencer. That's right. uh, <laughs> I just felt like they were, like, we listed all those awards that won. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The majority of them were Jeff Keighley just saying them real quick. And I understand that could yeah. be because of... I felt the show, the highlights of the show were when presenters came out mm-hmm. and when there were the, the orchestra and even the, the music performance happened. Hans Zimmer. They got um, Hans Zimmer on yeah, the It stage. was freaking Hans Zimmer. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, those are the things that make an award show great. And I know that it may be a different or a tougher spot when it comes to a video game award sure. show versus like a movie award show or a music award show. But you have all the elements it's there. It's like, like a more it, it, for like literally. Like I'm watching the crowd, and they're sitting there, and it's just world premiere. So the people are just watching an award show that shows trailers. Sure, it was a ton of yeah. trailers. Yeah, and yeah. I get it, but I just wish there was a little bit less of that. Got a little bit more. Got to pay for it. I, I was I, I was really hoping for there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to see that you know the games media sort of hyped me up for. I, you know, I was hoping I'd see the next uh, Batman game from WB Montreal. I was hoping I'd see. Something Metroidy, Chris. Another thing we didn't put on there: um, the freaking Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three is coming exclusively to Switch. Yeah, I, that got announced. I was like, "What? That that came out of nowhere." I don't think anyone was talking about that's that. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm but, a failure. But, but it felt it felt like it felt like it felt like it had the level was heightened as opposed to last year. I think it was mm. the same last year. But I just think back to that guy, the game developer from um, A Way Out. A Way Out. He was there, too. To me, he just completely dropped the serious level down by 10 points. Mm -hmm. No big deal. But this year, it seemed like Jeff Keighley finally achieved uh, kind of a, we're taking this seriously. This is the Academy Awards to us. Well, the big thing that they changed from last year that I give him a lot of praise, like last year, there was a lot Mm -hmm. of... The best action adventure game brought to you by Speed Stick or something like that. Oh, there, like, but yeah. there was this, uh, and they, they were, were really harping on the vaping this year. Yeah, they were. Yeah, the truth, truth commercials, <laughs> Those which truth. is funny because the truth is funded by big tobacco. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Yeah, they have to. That's part of their agreement. I, I know, but it's like, hey, we know you're still addicted to this stuff, but the truth <laughs> but is, we're going to tell you it's but, bad for you. But the tobacco companies are like, you want us to go after vaping? No problem. Yeah, problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah. um, For sure. Cool. Um, Excellent. That's you enough. know what would be cool? Oh, we're doing a thing. Oh, uh, um, if I had a classic Man. game that got some new levels in it. Or, or, like, or you could say, like, Jeff Keighley really took the Game Awards to a new level, well, right? guys, speaking of that, <laughs> new levels... I said levels. Yeah, he did. Get on my level. For Doom OG, John Romero, the creator of the original Doom, has announced that new levels will be added to the 1993 classic. They are calling it a free megawad. 
called Sigil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It will contain a total of eighteen levels with nine for nine, sing- <laughs> nine for single player and nine for nine! death nine nine for deathmatch. The levels will be released in mid February of twenty nineteen, and players must own the original nineteen ninety three registered version of Doom to be able mm. to play the new levels. According to Romero, Sigil is a spiritual successor to the fourth episode of Doom, and will pick right up where the previous left off. So, so sh- you oh guys can tell me. I'm trying to think of someone. I wanted who, to play this. Would I be out of luck because I yeah, don't have the original version? I think version? so. Yeah, this I'm is, trying to remember who actually still has their Windows 95 PC with Doom, original right. Doom installed. Surely surely there's a license or something you can go on Steam I am and serious, get this, right? And don't call me Shirley. Yes, um, surely that's what he meant. I think so. I'm sure if you've bought the actual classic <laughs> Doom somewhere, whether it's on yeah. Steam or... Okay. And this just in... People no. are flocking to Goodwill to find versions of Doom on PC. <laughs> um, as above, we'll continue the Doom. Um, so below was announced more than five years ago, and we have not seen much of it since. Um, on December 14th, the game, developed by Cappy Games, will finally see the light of day. <laughs> uh, below is a roguelike dungeon crawler uh, where players will explore a mysterious underground world where death awaits around every corner. Chris, I think you've been yeah. looking forward to this particular. I have. Um, I love sword and sorcery. Um, Cappy games, they do really cool aesthetics and really cool music in their games. Um, with See, a Sean, lot of, aesthetic means, Oh, with a lot of, uh, minimalistic, <laughs> uh, elements like to their worlds. Right. And, and they still find a way to convey, emotion in those mm-hmm. games like mm-hmm. very impressive and you know this game it's very clear this got announced when xbox one got announced like the original you know hey we're doing a tv thing and you <laughs> drm box and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff right uh and it's been brought up in trailers at e3s through the years and i think it was at the end of 2016 they had to delay again they basically said we're not saying they said we're not talking again until we're ready to release it because we we don't like this whole entire lying to you guys and like sure. you know having to revise consistently um but yeah i'm excited uh the best part about it it's on game pass so like for people yeah if you right now if you don't have game pass or you just have an xbox one and you do have game pass you can get it for one dollar a month right now and you can get two new indie games that are like really in high demand in ash and and uh and below so and it comes out friday yeah along with ori i think is also coming out this week too so for those who don't own ori the the first ori you about um, give me a heart attack yeah, yeah i was like whoa yeah there's a first they're doing flash. like they're doing a whole entire speaking of megawatt <laughs> they've been doing a whole entire oh. thing with uh <laughs> They've been doing a whole entire thing of like, uh, they used to have the summer sale with Xbox 360 back in the day. They've mm-hmm. revitalized it with the winter, uh, games or winter games or something like that. And they basically said all these indie games that are a part of it, they're all going to be on Games Pass. So like Mutant, uh, Zero or whatever that game, that RTS game that came out a couple of weeks ago, that's on there. Uh, Ashen was this week's and then next week or this Friday will be below. I don't know Excellent. what else is coming. Cool. Hmm. Yeah. That was uh These all count as Xbox exclusives. We're claiming mean, them. <laughs> getting getting at this point, getting Xbox Game Pass is a no brainer. I would agree that yeah, if, if at this point if, if Xbox could put a game, you know, on Game Pass, it is a no brainer for them to, to continue the success of Well speaking what, of no brainers. Yeah. 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 Since we're I mean, we are kinda hard talking about no brainers. E three is a no brainer <laughs> for Nintendo. Oh, <laughs> in light of Sony bowing out of the 2019 E3, Nintendo has indicated the intent to remain heavily involved. Nintendo, in fact, called it a, 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 a <laughs> quote, outstanding opportunity to make new announcements. According to Reggie, quote, E3 is the opportunity for the world to know our uh, uh, for the world to find out what's new for video games as entertainment. And during that time, we generate more engagement than whether it's CES or Comic Con or other big entertainment events. People tune in to find out what's new and to have first playable experiences for our industry. That's why E3 is important to Nintendo, end quote. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not either. They're like, yeah. we're not going anywhere. It's like, why would they change what they're doing? It's like, yeah. It, it's not like they have a humongous presence at E3, but they 
have it. They they know very well of the advantages of, regardless, dropping a video on Tuesday at whatever, you know, 10 a.m. or whatever it is, and knowing that basically everyone who's attending E3 and everyone on the web is going to tune into that and see what new announcements they have. And then also to have the floor, have the whatever games they have out there for everyone to try out. Well, I think Nintendo, more so than any other company, has figured out how to make E3, E3 work for them. Yeah. Old E3. <clears throat> Old E3. Old E3. <clears throat> so, I mean, you think of two years ago, they committed to basically showing one game. Purely one game, nothing else. And they decked out their floor with Breath of the Wild decoration, and they walked away from that with Game of the Show. Yeah. Um, they focused on that. They focused on Nintendo Treehouse, and they focused on the Direct. Talk about a minimalist approach to E3, but it paid off in spades. And this year they showed off uh, Smash, and I don't know if they walked away with Game of the Show this year. I don't think they did. They didn't, yeah. But – Eat, but Nintendo gets to enjoy the fact that everybody, Spider-Man. everybody enjoys, everybody flocks to that booth. Mm-hmm. So I think you know the way Nintendo's doing it with a minimalist approach, showing committing to one game at least for the past two years. I think they're the ones benefiting the most from this type of venue. One mm-hmm. could argue that Sony's the way they're approaching their their. It's not a it's not a one size fits all approach. Sony. This could be the right deal for Sony, and this could be the right deal for Nintendo. Just depends on what about what, the what about Microsoft. Needs. Is it the right deal for them? Definitely the right deal to show up. Yeah, man. <laughs> Even yeah. if they're going to give it one last go, they're definitely doing it. This, doing it's, it this it's year. It's like if you're Sony, I the the truth is, this, you can afford to not show up to E3 right now. Like that's that's the honest truth. Like they don't have to go. It's like, hey, we have 90 million consoles basically by the time the next E3 shows up. We're gonna be fine, and let's so yeah. let's not let's, let's not spend ninety million dollars. Exactly, get. exactly, because we're gonna just show you the exact same things you've been seeing for the last year, unless they're already out. I would just love to see the expense report from one of the big three, from food to hotels like literally to the whole, yeah. the whole expense. I'm report. sure it's huge, uh, huge, huge. huge. <laughs> I mean, I remember Phil was on. Um, you know, he always does like an interview with Ryan McCaffrey of IGN usually once a year. And he said like pretty much right now is the planning stage for it. Like they're right now, they're going through, they're building their set, they're figuring out and they're starting to slot games and say, what will be there? What won't? What exclusives will we have? What, what partnerships are we going to have on stage? You know, what yeah. gimmicks if we're going to do anything like that? Like for instance, like, you know, they're going to bring out McLaren or something. Um, all see, that's being figured out for Forza. Also announced for Rocket League. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Good catch. Yeah, yeah. So we just we just go right into the next one. Then you want to do that? You know what? You can also catch ah Monster <laughs> Hunter expansion. That's right. I could I, I could have said now while E three might not necessarily be expanding. You know what is expanding? <laughs> Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is getting a paid expansion called Iceborne, and there's also a collaboration with The Witcher Three, Wild Hunt. Iceborne will be available in autumn uh, 2019 and includes, uh, quote, new quest ranks, locales, monsters, moves, and equipment. Its uh, new story will follow, will also follow from the main game's conclusion. Um, early in 2019, Chris, how do you say this name? Geralt of uh, Rivia will become available as a playable character. That's pretty dope. I yo. think it's time for Chris to jump on the Monster Hunter. I kind of have to, and it makes sense. Like, because yeah, that's what Geralt does. Yeah. He hunts monsters. It fits completely. <laughs> I love it when, um, when two worlds kind of like two worlds collide. Um, like when they brought in a character from the Final Fantasy non online universe mm. to the actual Assassin's online Creed universe. No. Oh. Um, cause was, I had that where I was playing Assassin's Creed and all of a sudden dude from Final Fantasy 15 showed up. And I was like, like real? Yeah. I was like, what the heck just happened? I forgot they had a partnership. <laughs> origins. It was an origins. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. was like, what is he dope. doing here? <laughs> but, uh, speaking of, oh, really? You know, other Creed. partnerships? Wow. Oh, and just a, our partnerships. Geralt's also in Soul Calibur 6. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Fun fact. Yeah. Fun fact, Sean. Did it win fighting game of the year? 
I think. No. No, no, no. it didn't, right? Dragon Ball did. Dragon Ball Fighters. Z- you should go watch the uh, Donkey video, though. You should cause... shut your face. <laughs> he has some wonderful creations in that one. Speaking of Assassin's Creed, we, we the weren't... first uh, DLC dropped. Oh, wait, that wasn't a pivot? No. Oh, th- yeah. <laughs> I really thought you were trying to wedge a pivot in there. You saw my Assassin's Creed. Oh. Did you skip one? No. We're not skipping anything. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I did see that. Um, it's out now. I'm did slowly... you buy the pass? Yeah, I did because I got that one. Mm. You know, that came he with it. He pointed at something, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> uh, it's for John. I was like, I got that one. See it? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll get to it at some point um, because I still, I finally, I did get to play a little <clears throat> bit of it um, following my little break between Fallout and Just Cause, mm-hmm. and uh, I will say that I've just about killed everyone I can without going through the main storyline on the uh, cult. So now I'm just working on the the stuff with like Atlantis and all that. Oh, because you never finished it. No, I, I, forgot, I, I, forgot I have not that. beat it. I had to put it down for the game of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of game of the year, uh, this one's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Arena War for Grand Theft Auto Online. The next big update for GTA Online is called Arena War, and it's arriving tomorrow. For anyone who was worried that Red Dead Online would sort just of completely shut it down, shut it down. <laughs> the description reads, quote, ruthless gladiatorial combat meets the bleeding edge of vehicular modification slash homicide technology in one spectacular and highly combustible competition. Arena War will have a career path allowing you to earn points and rank up and acquire more wapanized, <laughs> yeah, nice wapanized, <laughs> weaponized vehicles. It sounds like a battle royale mode, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. In my, in my <clears throat> head, it sounds kind of like a destruction derby, or yeah, like kind of sounds like twisted or, metal versus what's that freaking sounds death like, race? Sounds like death Thunderdome, race. yeah, yeah, or, yeah from Thunderdome, Mad Max. anything Mad Max. like that. Which, in in essence, can be a battle royale, which would be fine. I'd be cool with that. Well, Sean, battle royales are, seem to be the it thing these days. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> and that some say that the destination to play the best battle royale is in Call of Duty. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. Well, speaking of that, John, <laughs> uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Battle Edition will be available on Battle.net. You know, the place like where World of Warcraft and everything is. Yes. Um, it's so crazy. And it will feature just the multiplayer and blackout modes for the limited time price of $30. Uh, players, That's the price of PUBG. That would be you guys uh, have the option to upgrade to the Digital Standard Edition. Digital Standard Edition. Uh, to get Zombies Mode, 1,100 Call of Duty points, and uh, various bonus items for an undisclosed price so, of like probably a lot more uh, money. Some people would say 1,100 so, points. So try this on for size, <laughs> gentlemen. Um, this To me, this hints at a future price... Possible. optimization yeah. for how they're going to be doing this going forward. I think every year they're going to release Battle Royale for a price of $20 a year. $30. Well, this is $30 plus um, multiplayer mode Yeah, for other things. So I think they're going to say $20 is your base for Battle Royale, 30 to 40 is your base for Battle Royale and multiplayer, and then they're going to stack zombies. So I, I think they're going to – this gives me the impression that they're going to start pricing Call of Duty – as a or, as a package model, we, or, we we wondered how they were going to do that. Or what if they just go ahead and say, "Hey, we're casually breaking this away. Like we're going to go ahead and give you the multiplayer maps because, hey, why not?" Um, but like the next Call of Duty, we're not going to have a new Battle Royale mode. We're just going to be like, it's that's going to be there, and you can buy it for thirty <laughs> bucks whenever you want. And, and it's going to have it. seasons like Fortnite, exactly. And yeah, I can um, see that. For and sure. then, like, by the way, next year. Here's a new single player Call of Duty. We're returning to our roots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I think this is, to your point, I agree. But yeah, I think this is like a starting point of they're they're testing the waters to see what they can get away just with. Dipping their toe in to see if it's cold or not. Yeah. Hey, just speaking of another thing, we forgot to mention. PUBG also announced their new map, their new map, ah, which is like a snow one. Mm-hmm. So fun fact for those who love PUBG. Well, we clearly, and I'm tired of you saying we missed it. We we highlighted not all with a disclaimer. Hey, In Danny Defensive. No, I just want to let you know that you need to stop. I just heard it, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. PUBG announced this. <laughs> I, I fell apart, didn't I? I need Things to let you apart. know you need to stop. Your words were leaking. You know what I need to Whoa. stop doing? Whoa. What? Same finally this week. 
talk about leakage. Oh god, that sounded more like a swallow from a is he? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> is, it, is it already finally? Yeah, finally this week. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty again. DLC leaks. What do you so, mean again? Bias. Well, the previous thing was you peaked. The previous one was Call of Duty as well. Yeah, but look, at, the delivery was bad. Okay, <laughs> it was, dude, it was not top notch. Black Ops players in Australia. Good day, mate. No, <laughs> no, good day, mate. On the Barbie, can that we? Say, was, I mean, can we that was it? not a knife. Notice <laughs> that's not a knife. Notice they had the ability to download and play. Still not a knife. The DLC's two new multiplayer maps, Madagascar and Elevation. Players also were able to access and post footage of the new Dead of the Night Zombies mode, confirming the actors Kiefer Sutherland and Charles Dance appear in the new mode. According to a response from Treyarch, quote, we're aware that some gla- uh, gameplay footage featuring pre-release versions of upcoming Black Ops past content has released in some regions and er- and little earlier than a little earlier than planned. The real deal arrives tomorrow along with the new trailer, so stay tuned and stay spoiler free out there. I love when you get those Glaim page uh, leaks. It's okay. Glaim? You said Glaim. No, he didn't. You just heard he did. Glaim. I heard Glaim. <clears throat> no. Well, How could you hear that with all your hitting of your vaporizer thing? <laughs> because I have headphones. Oh, good point, Chris. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> That's good stuff. But that yeah, good stuff. Um, I haven't. That's uh, cool. That's a nice. It's always nice when they screw up and everyone benefits, right? Yeah, they're like, it's okay. Hey man, Call of Duty, best selling, uh, best selling. Yep, old best, best selling game of the year. Let's wrap it up, Chris. Best John is done. Year. <laughs> Have we been telling them that John's been drinking? <laughs> Can we go with that? They believe us, wouldn't they? I don't think so. John yeah, that's true. Um, you guys want to wrap this up? Never. I didn't peek. I definitely peeked. Hey, and Rico's still playing. Rico, <laughs> how you doing, buddy? <laughs> like, hey, I gotta go get these guys. And his boots, right? Yeah. Them boots. They're like, what the, are they at the beginning of the show again? <laughs> <laughs> if so, you yeah. want to write in your thoughts, you can do so by emailing us at weeklygameschat at gmail.com. That's weeklygameschat at gmail.com, just like ever did. Ever. Yeah. He says... He doesn't even say, hey guys, he just went right into it. <laughs> but I'll just say, uh, I'll just say for, hey guys. Hey, ever. <laughs> I agree with whoever, who, whomever said this, Dragon's Dogma does rock. That was me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for agree, agree, agree. Can we verify agree, that, John? It was me. I brought it up. I was the only one that, I'm the only one who ever brings up Dragon's Dogma. Have you played Dragon's Dogma? Yes, I love it. Yeah. John, you're the person who actually listens to this thing. So, uh, did he say that? I'll believe you either way. Yeah, I, I, I responded to his comment saying that uh, that game gets um, praise or something a lot like of that. Yeah, praise. I remember People that. Talk about yeah, it all of time. a sudden, right? It's just coming back to you like Celine Dion. Yep. <laughs> that's, all that's, all coming. that's my favorite Celine song. <laughs> um, uh, one of the few games I'm playing off and on again ever since it came out on the PS4. October 3rd, 2017, question mark? Yeah, I think it was a remake, right? Or a re-release I or something? I can't remember. Because it was know. a PS3 game. Uh, fantastic Nothing. fantasy game, mm-hmm. and I really don't mind the few fast travel points because there's all those creatures to kill while you're walking around. It's a little rough around the edges, but I don't really mind because the game is just so much fun. Plus, the Dark Horizon DLC is just the icing on a very delicious game. Well delicious said, sir. Game. He says, sorry for ranting about Dragon's Dogma. I don't really feel like that was a rant. <laughs> I don't that I was a like very, excellent. yeah, very well put yeah. uh, point there ever. Uh, but I feel like it's a game that not many people played. So whenever I hear a fellow gamer giving praise, I can't but help to chime in and get more people to play it. Hopefully, that way we can all get Dragon's Dogma 2. Game on. And I'm not saying that last part. It says go Cowboys, but it really should say go Cooper. Uh, ever, <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah. ever, ever listen, I'm glad, You're welcome. You, I'm glad <laughs> ever, I'm glad you enjoy Dragon's Dogma, but next time, don't, don't, don't subject 
this thing, Darksiders Three. You got my hopes up, man. Well, that was the that was the title. I don't the, care. Well, you, well, we can talk about how good Darksiders Three was again. Hashtag butt hurt. Hashtag. I'm really fine. I'm glad H. he enjoys. Do- Hashtag uh, prep age cream. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Use it. What? <laughs> What? The wives are astonishing. <laughs> First time. Next up, Jason, a.k.a. Big Riff, writes in. What's oh, up, yeah. Big Riff? And he says, hey there, guys. Actually, I love his uh, yeah, yeah. His so, title. Since there weren't... Oh, yeah. Uh, attention, Richard Bastards. That's pretty <laughs> solid. Uh, since there weren't any emails last week, consider this my deepest sympathies. Oh, oh there, we, I, I, I go back and forth, and I tell Chris, let's not say there aren't any. They have to be child. <laughs> Okay. They Jeez. have to be reminded. I'm okay. My lung just fell out. <clears throat> don't die. Don't vape so much, man. <laughs> I don't vape. It's your, I got second hand vape. <laughs> That'd be funny if there was such a thing. Uh, with Chris's yearly music episode coming up fast, I had a thought. Ooh. I've been a musician and gamer for basically my entire life. I've always been into punk and metal bands, toured the U.S. a handful of times, had my music featured in a couple of cool places, and generally had minor brushes with success. None of which have ever put money in my pocket. We know uh, the feeling. Jason, yeah. <laughs> trust me, I know plenty of people that will echo your sentiments. Yeah. Uh, I've always felt that there's a place for rock music played by bands and assembled by composers to fit in video games. The most obvious example being the incredible soundtrack for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, but to a lesser extent, the touches of modern me- metallic rock featured in places like the Halo soundtrack, Doom, and that terrible Aerosmith arcade game. (laughs) I don't even remember that game. I do. Oh, God, it's awful. Uh, If there was a game that you could replace the soundtrack, what game would it be? And what would you have playing for its title screen? Hmm, that's hard. Um, If I'm thinking of one just offhand, System Shock, uh, which has a really cool... Um, kind of sci-fi soundtrack to it. If I could put it now, I would take Radiohead's Kid A and I would make that the um, soundtrack for the game and I would have Kid A playing at the very beginning at the tile screen because it just fits to me. Like, that is appropriate. Because mm. it's kind of like, it's an album that sounds like it's made by a computer. I, would, I would throw some death metal into certain sequences of Metroid Prime. Mm. I thought that I think that would be dun, 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 dun. <laughs> exactly roll into a more fist ball. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> death metal or whatever music was attached to Doom at, during that metal, you, you were feeling it, bro. That was the greatest music ever. <laughs> I just need to buy. It. That's what I'm gonna get, John. I'm just gonna give him a bunch of black metal for uh, <laughs> for him the Doom soundtrack. What are you talking I'll, about? I'll go to Mikey and be like, Mikey, give me a bunch of like Doom and like black metal to give, and you can go, Darren. We'll just like give him this huge collection of metal music, <laughs> and then John will become a metalhead and it'll be the greatest thing it ever because really, he'll be in his perfect like he'll get tied up Ozark <laughs> outfit on. <laughs> if you came in. To- <laughs> to your boss's office, just all of a sudden, this metal tattoo on your face. I would, so, I'd be so happy. But with your shirt buttoned in and tucked up, yes, Wait, indeed. Tucked in and John's just up. staring at you, like, what happened to him? <laughs> uh, I, Sean, you got him? I, well, I love the Neil it's, Diamond. No, it's an old. I mean, Metallica's not like anything. You know, old. It's old school, <clears> like '80s type of m- m- metal or whatever. But I love. It's the super cliche, but I do love Enter the Sandman as far as its intro and how it builds. And I've, tr- I've been trying to think of a game that that would feel really BA as uh, hmm. maybe a level starts and then as the action picks up. Halo? It could be Halo. I don't know. But the, but he's really getting me on the title screen, like that kind of plan, letting you know that you're fixing to go into like. You know, or Gears. Like, gears could you imagine be, like, oh, like you just had a level where all you do is use the chainsaw yes. lancer and it's like, dun, 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 and just start revving up and running. Or, uh, and, give me change up, change up, change up. <laughs> give me fuel, give me fire, that kind give of me, stuff. Give me something on desire. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm not really into the new metal, uh, but like you said, yeah. I got a friend. I'm not, yeah, I'm not obviously who, does, who is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Like Mikey is always the guy who like he'll go through these phases of Mel and he always tries to get me and I'm I've never I respect the heck <laughs> like there are two types of musicians out there I respect the heck of and he actually hit both of them punk and Mel bands because you can't be in those types of bands and not uh you can't be in like our punk or especially a Mel band and not be like really dedicated to what you do. Versus, we accidentally like, accidentally read further. Yeah, yeah. You just keep talking, but it's fine. Unlike, uh, unlike these two laughing hyenas, like, for instance, this, uh, 
for instance, like this DJ over here, he can kind of just wing it every night. But male guitarists, they have to pretty much know their stuff and yep. always be on point because mm-hmm. the moment they screw up, everything falls apart in a male band. So yeah. props to Jason here for uh, for I being think dedicated I think to that crap. I think it's super, I can't do it. super cool. Yeah. Uh, that you're into music like that, dude. Much uh, respect. Uh, Genesis Invisible Touch over the Super Mario 3. <laughs> oh, game. God. That would be great, too. <laughs> That's a great album. I love that album. Uh, right. But he, uh, Jason continues and says, Anyways, I love the show. Been listening since the Destiny episode, which I looked for. And it's so far back that it's not on iTunes anymore. You can actually wow. go to our Libsyn page. Yeah, like iTunes Falls caps off, off uh, after 100 episodes. So. Huh. Um, but if you go to our Libsyn page, all the episodes are there. L I B S Y N. Yeah. Libsyn. Yes. Yeah, just, just search Libsyn and, and weekly games chat. You should find a, a, a link. <laughs> um, and I haven't missed one since then. <laughs> Y'all are the best. I appreciate everything about the show, especially Chris's quiet vaping, John's hearty dad laugh, and Sean's affinity <laughs> for not pulling out. <laughs> uh, Jason, yes. one, that was a great email, but, uh, one slight criticism. Uh, you misspelled Sean. Uh, and the last part he said was to be read off air, so then I will do that. But no, that's... he said necessarily. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He uh, said if you, he, it's kind of like he you don't he would to... love if we did. Oh, he doesn't. Yeah. Oh, he... yeah. Okay. It is okay. So he did. Uh, he wrote a, P, a PS. That's a postscript, I believe. Uh, and we don't mind anything you guys have out there. You show us love, and we'll show you love. It's Unless it's like a project of you killing babies <clears throat> yeah, on spikes. That, don't gonna, do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't jump the gun on that one. <laughs> don't jump the gun. Uh, you don't need to read this part on air necessarily, but if you wanted to check out my current project, it's called... Uh, Trida. Trida. Oh, yeah. He literally put the breakdown yeah, there, and I just skipped over it. Uh, and you can find us at trida.bandcamp.com, and also on Facebook at the same, and also on Instagram. So if you like the medals... Check or them out. Possibly the punks. I'm not sure which one uh, he's more dedicated to in this one. Or I if you just have a love for this audience, check him out. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Uh, Sean. Oh, it's my turn. People it's- write to us, and they do so by writing in at Weekly Games Chat on Twitter. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, about a week ago, I did uh, GameSpot, uh, what they call um, retweeted. Um, they noted that the original PlayStation released more than 24 years ago in Japan. Ooh. Um, so they asked, what was your favorite PS1 game? I did. I retweeted, and we had um, at 11 Sneaker Freak um, reply to that. And he, I just wanted to point his out because he said Spyro, which was cool because Spyro, of course, was a classic who has since recently um, had like a remaster-ish thing. Um, we had a uh, at C Puckett 7. Um, I think was, yeah, let me click on that. It was from the Game Awards trailer and it was the new Fallout that was announced or Far Cry that was announced. He, he said, Far Out, Far Cry, New Hope County. Maybe this is the video game gods making up for Fallout 76. <laughs> and he added us in that, which, yes. is, which is hilarious. Uh, let me scroll I'd up. I'd love to know if the protagonist is the same, like uh, Joseph Seed sends him out to for fix Far Cry. He, yeah. I mean, it looks like the world's going on, and then I'm guessing Joseph C., who's been in that bunker with uh, our protagonist from the first game, is going to reemerge. Yeah, he's like, this is not what I had in mind. Go fix it. It did answer our question, because, remember, we were having a debate for a while, because you were, Whether you it were was kind in of, your mind, yeah. Yeah, you were kind of pressing a desire in your mind, or it was a God act, and it's like, no, no, nuclear fallout. They yeah. kind of pretty much, which, by the way, never seen a nuclear co- fallout create all that, like, wildlife and, uh, and, green fields right afterwards after playing know. fallout for you the don't last. know you don't know <laughs> sorry sean uh, no it's fine dude y'all do your thing um at 11 sneaker freak also asked us how did we feel um about god of war getting video game of the year um they thought that red dead should have won so you're kind of in there you uh, go chris's boat me and john are very happy with the god of war winning i think i mean i can't i can't say i'm not upset with it chris probably. chris played both games you've played both both games i'm kind of agnostic i was just given kind of an analysis on it i beat both games true yes yeah, sorry uh hey, Bob. <clears throat> at mario lando uh said at weekly games chat i recently got a psvr and i'm loving it uh, i have a question for the best dj i've never experienced but obviously is the goat that's me <laughs> um, beside the games you review, do you have any highly rated Richards I can throw on my face? Uh, keep up the great work, Sean, John, and Chris. He actually typed it, Sean, John, and Chris. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I think I haven't. I think one you should get if you haven't picked it up is Beat Saber. 
Um, there's also a, another game I believe made by the creators of Moss. It's called like Daracene or something like that. That got some pretty good praise. But if you've got the ones that I've covered, uh, the Tetris effects, the the game of the year for VR, which is Astrobot. Uh, if you played Moss, IGN on their game of the year nominees two PlayStation VR titles on there: Tetris Effect and Astrobot. Yeah, it's legit. Take that, Moss. <laughs> Take that, Moss. Is a, it apparently? I thought that was last year. Anyway, it, March. March, yeah, it was this year. He did a March. He did one bob. Yeah, because then I, I got my PSVR for Father. I remember this year, making right? the the art. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that was this yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. So, Yum. um, yeah, definitely. That's plenty for you to play if you want a shooter. Farpoint is legit, and so is um, uh, Firepoint Zero Hour. Don't they have a Firewall uh, Zero Hour? Sorry. Don't they? Is it out the whole entire Borderlands and VR thing? Uh, that was coming out because I saw I saw they did like a live a good action uh, <clears throat> yeah. thing, like where. You see the person, and she's like, and she puts the VR on, and all of a sudden she's the um, the one chick from Borderlands that's got like the lightning abilities, and you see a real life claptrap there just rolling around and chaos going on. Their trailer for that game has got me pretty stoked about it. Don't you hate the clap, man? Oh, well, they got medicine for it. What? What happened? Nothing. You guys got nothing, right? Penicillin. When, penicillin. When, when I penicillin. Say something like that, y'all just leave me hanging, huh? Penicillin. Um, I might. So have been let's vaping. see. We. I don't want to give uh, follow back to at Common Carrier. Thank you for the follow, following you back, and that's it. I'm ready to go eat, so I'm wrapping. Not wrapping up because I never do that, but I'm going back to Chris. Anything on Facebook? We gotta go Chris? back. <clears throat> we gotta go back. Uh, no, no comments except for likes of the the wonderful art that we put up every week for these the shows. The pre-game art. Yeah. If you follow us on Facebook, you will see the art for every episode, so you will have an idea if you pay attention and look behind the big words that say Weekly Game Chat. You can figure out what the topic will be for this week. That's Weekly Game Chat <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, also, as Sean said, follow us on Twitter, Weekly Game Chat. And if you, again, want to email in your thoughts and opinions in very long form, you can do so by hitting us up at weeklygameschat at gmail.com. Uh, this has been episode 183 of Weekly Games Chat. If you like the show, subscribe to us on iTunes or whatever podcast service you use, and you will get a new episode just like this one every Wednesday. It's good because, you know, get a new game if the game came out on Tuesday, and then you can listen to us on Wednesday, and then a week later you can hear about the game you wanted to play on Tuesday if we're playing it too. Um, if they have a review system there, drop us a review or a like or whatever. It helps people find the show. Uh, and <clears throat> next week is smash. <laughs> yeah. Next week is definitely going to be smash bros. That will be our last, I guess for those who are wondering, it'll be our last live episode of With the, the year. all three yeah, of us here, like all three on here. a topic. Then it'll be Chris's <laughs> Christmas, Christmas, <laughs> Chris's spectacular music episode where he puts, yeah. Uh, music from the games in this year and there, and then we all take off for New Year's. Yeah, and then uh, hopefully Bama will be on their way to their Bama. 18th national championship. <laughs> Do I have a dad laugh? You have a he said yeah. a hearty laugh. You have a hearty laugh. He really? said a hearty dad laugh. Okay, John, you literally do look people like, say I laugh like Muttley when I laugh. Okay, no, no, you do. You do sound like. See, and I mean, it's, it's it's can you help the way you laugh? Are you going to hone in on the fact that he said dad for the rest of the week? Now listen to me, John. I want you to listen to me. <laughs> now what you're not going to do is, <laughs> John, the way you laugh. You remind me of the guy in the progressive commercials right now, where they're oh. like, "You can't help becoming your parents," and he's just like, <laughs> "I'm not tired." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there it is. That's, That's, hearty. That's yeah. hearty. All right, kids, let's wrap this up. Never. What? What happened? But yeah, um, so we'll take the week <laughs> off of New Year's, and then for those wondering, the week after will probably be our top five games each uh, for 2018. We'll reveal those, and I'm already looking at titles for 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 January. I've heard one today because I'm definitely playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, until then. I will simply say, game on, Sean. Game on, Chris. Game on, John. Game on, Chris and Sean. Game on, John. Sour Patch. Ooh. Kids. <laughs> Your mom's box. Peace out, everybody. <laughs> I'm done.